with Thursday marking 420, we're keeping it green, but not in the way you're thinking. With both Earth Day and Arbor Day coming up later this April, we're talking trees. Planting a tree sounds like a great way to help the environment, right? It definitely can be, but we'll be talking about how to do it the right way. Nonprofits and advocacy groups love to have campaigns for planting trees. From the Nature Conservancy's Plant a Billion Trees campaign to the World Economic Forum's One Trillion Tree Initiative, there's almost a race to see who can set the most ambitious tree planting goal. So let's back up a second. Why are trees good for the environment? Trees, in a sense, are a natural complement to humans and animals. Humans breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, or CO2. Trees, meanwhile, take the carbon dioxide and put out oxygen. In an era when CO2 levels are driving warming global temperatures and climate change, there's a hope trees can reverse the change, or at least stem it. St stem it. <laughs> you see what I did there? Add to it that the tree alone isn't the only thing addressing carbon in the atmosphere. Take it from Deborah Landau of the Nature Conservancy, who has led the planting of more than 150,000 trees in more than two decades with the organization. A lot of people understand the importance of planting trees in order to lock in carbon, at, you know, remove carbon out of the atmosphere is what trees do. But trees are also building soils and the soils underneath uh, mature forests. The soils themselves hold tremendous amount of carbon that often people don't really understand that connection. It's not just the trees, it's also the roots and it's also the soils under the trees. A lot of it has its roots in a 2019 study that found that planting roughly a trillion trees could remove hundreds of billions of tons of atmospheric carbon. But critics say they may have overestimated the impact of tree planting as a climate solution. The authors stand by their data, but have said their original study left room for misunderstanding. And in responding to the criticism, the authors have also said that this isn't meant to replace what they call an urgent need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels and deforestation. And for planting trees to work as an environmental help, they have to be planted the right way. It's a lesson learned from Arbor Day's origins. The holiday began in the U.S. largely from a push by Nebraska newspaper editor Jay Sterling Morton, who thought the Midwestern prairies needed more trees. While we now know that prairies are ecosystems of their own that can store carbon in their soil, the Arbor Day mission has broadened out with a focus on planting not just more trees, but the right trees for an ecosystem. Arbor Day Foundation Chief Executive Dan Lamb told us more. It's important that people pay attention to planting the right trees in the right place. You know, if you live in Minneapolis or Detroit, you might love palm trees, but they're not gonna do well. Just like if you live down in Miami, Colorado blue spruce probably isn't gonna be a great solution for you. Finding the right tree that fits your climate you live in is gonna ensure that you have the benefits of those trees for years to come. And you can find out which trees work best for your area with what are known as hardiness zone maps, which are available through places like the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Arbor Day Foundation. Much of planning a tree planting involves doing it in the appropriate area where, where the trees should be and making sure that it's, it's a native species of tree and, and filling the role that historically would have filled. So if an ecosystem has a lot of trees, plant trees there. It's pretty simple. And make sure the trees you're planting are local to and adaptable to the environment they're being planted in. Now, trees have advantages beyond just the global ecosystem. In neighborhoods, they can provide a canopy. That could become especially important in so-called heat islands. These are parts of cities that can get hotter because of a combination of things like buildings and roads making things hotter. I mean, it's definitely nicer to put your foot on some grass on a warm day as opposed to asphalt, right? National correspondent Meg Hilling takes us to Inglewood, California, where residents of the historically black and underserved area of Los Angeles are focusing on tree planting as a way to limit the hit of climate change and warmer temperatures on their community. When it comes to addressing climate change, the first step is sometimes on a shovel. And no one knows that better than the folks at Tree People. We have 12 trees to get planted on this block on 111th Street. 
For 50 years, this environmental advocacy group has been planting trees across Southern California with the goal of educating and inspiring folks to take responsibility for their environment. We plant thousands of trees every year with thousands of people. <laughs> so if you add that up for 50 years, um, it's a pretty big number. While that mission has remained the same over the years, the group has been increasingly focusing on urban areas. One, two, three, up. And then you guys can put the cart down. We'll just dump all this on here. Communities like Inglewood, just outside of Los Angeles. You can't really afford to get into environmentalism when you're dealing with issues of like poverty, housing insecurity, food insecurity, environmental justice, and all of these things that systematically impact the communities that need the most support. A reality that has become increasingly problematic in the face of climate change. You find the communities that have the least amount of green spaces are the most directly impacted by the effects of climate change. When there's less tree coverage, there's less shade. Um, so you find that the people who are most economically impacted also end up having to pay more in electricity bills because they have to cool their house um, even more in the hot times. And the problems don't end there. There's issues of air quality. You find that people within the urban environment who don't have green spaces, they also have a higher suffrage of asthma and other respiratory related illnesses. We're just gonna check on these groups over here, see how they're doing. Which is why volunteer tree planting days are so important to the folks at Tree People. One thing we really love to do is we like to get the communities and the families involved. And so a really great aspect of that is allowing children to be a part of the planting. Um, they love to get their hands dirty, but also after we plant trees, we ask folks to name the tree. And so it kind of gives you this ownership over the tree. And for children, like they really remember it. They come back and check on it. They want to water it. Give me like four more hits. One, two. I think a lot of people don't take it seriously until they feel the effects and they may not in their lifetime, but we're doing this preventative for generations to come. It's important to note that it's not enough just to plant a tree. In order for urban forests to have any shot at long-term survival, it is crucial that newly planted trees are cared for and maintained by their communities, well after the shovels, buckets, and even Earth Week itself are gone. The only reason these trees are gonna survive at the end of the day is if residents and neighbors are taking that personal action to take care of that tree, to make sure it's not leaning over, to water it, to make sure it's really established and gonna be live a strong and healthy life and, and a long life. While it'll take time for these young trees to mature, their roots are already spreading deep into streets like this. It's a beautiful thing to see afterwards too when you're walking down these, this, these streets that historically maybe it didn't have any trees beforehand and seeing the new growth that's coming up, it, it brings like new life to the, to the area and to the community. It's, it's an amazing thing. Meg Hilling, Scripps News, Inglewood, California.